Hello everyone, today is Thursday, February 9, 2017, and this is the week in charts. Of course, I'd like to thank you guys and girls. I see we have some girls this week again for taking time out of your busy schedule to be here. I'm humbled by your presence, so thank you so much. So what are we talk about? Well, I think we need to continue to talk about this market. Uh, you got to be careful when you're labeling markets, so maybe I need to take that label out. But so far, so good. Things are looking pretty good in here, and I'll flesh that out in quite a bit of detail. Uh, obviously, your questions on trading and your favorite stock picks. For those of you who are new to the show, to make sure we get to all of your picks, this is for your benefit, obviously, just ask about a stock and then hit return. Also, uh, not all. So I, I know quite a few, as you'll see in this presentation, stocks, but um, I don't know all stocks, obviously, so give me the ticker, and then I'll uh, be happy to take a look at it. Uh, hold off on the stock picks if you don't mind until we get to the actual charts. Today I want to talk mostly about regret of both loss and opportunity, and that'll make a lot more sense in a minute. And you know what? Let's take a look at some charts. I want to take a look at some uh, recent setups and charts and charts. So what a concept, huh? I guess before we do all that, we have to take a little disclaimer screen. As you know, you can lose money trading or as often summing up. All predictions are about the future. Yeah, a lot of stuff can happen between now and then. I borrowed that from Greg Morris. I woke up this morning thinking about the portfolio. And I was just thinking, I think I woke up, wake up every morning thinking about the portfolio among other things, but mostly I think about markets when I wake up. And it hasn't looked so hot lately, the portfolio that is. And we'll take a look at that in just one second. And I realize that can be a little frustrating at times, especially if the overall market is hanging in there or doing fairly well. You expect to, to be doing much better, or it certainly is good. But you have to remember that we get paid to put money in the harm's way. And then as I was putting the slides together, I was thinking, you know what? That's the only way we get paid. We have to take risk. And so I don't want to make it sound too admirable, but as traders, we've, we've taken the initiative and we're taking the risk and we're willing to put money into harm's way. And I think that's what makes us different than a lot of other people. Now, one thing that does obviously occur and quite often is regret. And when I search for this, I think this is the Google answer that comes up right away. Google now has a dictionary. And I was looking at my website, too, for quite a few things on regret. I was doing a search through all my old columns. And what I was kind of looking for is the regret of a missed opportunity. And the reason is because the regret of a missed opportunity is a much stronger emotion. It's been proven. It's a much stronger emotion than the regret over a loss. So I find it kind of interesting that the first definition comes up, says in the definition, especially a loss or missed opportunity. It's got missed opportunity right there. And that's exactly what I'm getting at, but especially a missed opportunity. Now, here's the over portfolio, and if you've been following me for a while, you know me, I kind of like to show things warts and all, and that kind of helps to temper your, temper your expectations. Sometimes things don't work, as you know. If they always work, you never see my fat ass again, as I often say. But you can see this portfolio is not looking so hot. We have some losing trades in here, three of them, uh, to be more exact. And then we have a couple of winners, but the winners really aren't setting the world on fire. So this number here is not very impressive. In fact, it would actually be a loss if I wasn't showing this taken gain here. Now, some people say, Dave, why do you, why do you leave those, those prior profits in there? Well, I like to show the entire position. Otherwise, it'd be a nightmare to try to explain to somebody why I just have one symbol for one and two symbols for the other. And also, I think from a psychological perspective, and for those of you who aren't familiar with this, I don't want to go into too many details because 
Uh, I've covered it time and time again. But obviously, this is the swing trade portion of the trade, and this is the longer-term trend-following portion of the trade. I like to show them both or keep that original swing trade in there, even though it's been closed out, just so you could wrap your head around the entire trade from uh, a monetary standpoint and from a psychological standpoint too. So, but yes, uh, you know, it's all here. You can see this is actually a closed out trade. So overall, this would be at a loss if you, if I wasn't showing this closed out trade. But the way I see it is this, even though it's closed out, is part of this portfolio. And then when this one closes out, not if, when, hopefully 10 years from now, maybe 20, that'd be nice, right? Because that means that we'd be in a trend. Then it'll come out of the portfolio. And we just recently had one closed out after being in about a year. So that's the ultimate goal. But yeah, this number isn't so great. And trust me, I know that. And nobody's nobody's emailed me, but sometimes people email me and tell me, hey, Dave, the portfolio sucks. It's like, yeah, I know, okay? <laughs> I feel your pain. So one point I want to point out here is that if you have one big winner, it's going to make all the difference in the world. Now, this is a great example here because this number isn't so big. But you could you could definitely see without these two trades in here, you'd be at a pretty serious loss. You'd have to add up all these numbers. What's that? Three, six, another thousand. That's, uh, let's just say, 2,000 and change round numbers. That'd be pretty ugly as opposed to a slight gain. Not much to write home about, but better than a poking eye, you know? Don't look a gift horse in the mouth. Don't complain about a profit. And if you do... Cash out of everything and send it to me, okay? As I preach ad nauseum in 20-something years, no one has ever sent me any money because they were complained uh, because uh, after complaining about making it. Nobody's ever sent me money after complaining about making it. They just complain. Now, the point I'm trying to make is one big winner pays for it all. So I wanted to show you this portfolio, and I hate to use the word hope, but hopefully a few months from now, I'll come back and show you this portfolio again. I'll show you this exercise in just a few minutes, too, with a historical one. But I'd love to be able to come back and show you, hey, everything worked out great. And you know what? Worst case scenario, if it doesn't work out, then we have yet another lesson. But I'd love to come back and show you these same stocks a year from now and show you what what's happening. So the fat lady hasn't sung just yet, so stay tuned. It ain't over. now. Where I'm going with this is whenever you, you're going to have regrets, no matter what you do, especially in trading. And as I often write about, and I think it's from um, Robert Frey, is that more often than not, you will be in a state of regret. And I've been very cognizant, and that's that word we've been using lately, but I've been very cognizant of how much time I spend underwater and positions and then at some point in time I want to make some graphs maybe some um, what do you call the graph where you've got the little line above like this and the little line below I forget what you call that but you got like a baseline here and I need to make some graphs of some of these positions but it's pretty amazing lately it seems like I've had quite a few positions that look like this and then they finally look like this okay you finally have some uh, some nice profits here, but you spend a lot of time, quoting Mr. Frey, in a state of regret. Now, I often preach what you want to do is you want to, Phil, you threw me there. <laughs> what you want to do after after a trade, Phil wants a picture of my fat ass, so you know what I'm missing. You could just, the uh, fat ass is a metaphor for my entire uh, <laughs> body. I was, I've been working on it, but I had an injury recently that kind of slowed me down a little bit. That's another story. Uh, what do you want to do on every trade is you want to go in and do a postmortem. By postmortem, I mean go back at the end and look at what happened. But in this case, I'm going to kind of do a, a present mortem, I guess, so to speak, because these trades are still open. 
So let's go back and look at the original setups to see if there are any regrets. And you should do this on every trade. Always go back in time and look at the setups to see if you would have taken that setup if you were just seeing it for the first time. So here's the S&D trade. And again, these are straight from the portfolio, straight from the service. These are all official, quote unquote, official recommendations. You can see here that it had a very persistent move higher and then it had a TKO move. One second, sorry. Okay, so it had a TKO move in here. Now, in an ideal world, and I think if you go back and look at the service archives, which you could do, by the way, for free, if you're on a delayed service, uh, you'll see that I, I, I'd said in an ideal world, I wish this uh, TKO was a little bit deeper but it was a very persistent move higher. By persistency, I mean that the stock tends to go up day after day after day after day, and you could pretty much draw a line through all of the bars, okay? And mathematically, this is equivalent to linear regression, but you know me, I like to keep it simple and just draw a line through as many bars as possible. And then obviously the TKO type of move occurred. So that looked pretty good. Also, this was... Uh, an IPO, so there is some initial excitement in the stock, and that's why I wasn't quite the perfectionist that I often am when it comes to looking at charts. Sometimes I just, I'm probably a perfectionist to a fault at some point, at some time. Now, if we get into a rip-roaring bull market, I'll probably back off a little bit on that. But those of you who know me over the years, over the last few years at least, you'll notice that I've been very selective almost to a fault. And almost is a key word in that sentence. I think it's okay to be super duper selective. Now in this particular case, this was NTB. By the way, that SND was a metals and mining stock and metals and mining stocks have been doing what? Going higher. So we had the sector behind us. Also the overall market's been doing pretty good as we'll see in one second, and as you probably know. So we had the market behind us too. Now, banks have been doing especially well, uh, not so much in last few week or last few days or few weeks, but when this stock set up back in November, nearly December, they were doing very well, pretty good, I, I should say. Okay. So you can see we had a nice accelerated move higher, and then we had the pullback in here. And this is a foreign bank, and foreign banks were doing even better. So that one looks pretty good. So let's take a look at this Kemet. Kemet is electronics, or semiconductors, however you want to look at it. And semiconductors have been doing really well. In fact, they've been banging on new highs for a long time. But you can see that they, we have a pretty serious uptrend here. And as I often say, you should be able to draw a big blue arrow on a chart. It doesn't have to be blue. It's only blue because when I got started in my public career back in the mid-90s, way back in the trading market days, I guess it was a little bit later than the mid-90s, but uh, my paint shop program defaulted to blue, so my arrows were blue, and I got known as the guy that drew the big, I was known as the guy who drew the big blue arrows, and sometimes people told me where to stick them. And they were obviously fighting the trends. But the point is, it should be obvious, and it doesn't take Captain it doesn't take Captain Obvious to recognize that that is an uptrend. Now, if you got a good eye, you might notice that it did it did lose a little steam in here. But this is actually sort of a pattern I call a double top knockout, where you have a bit of a minor double top followed by a knockout move. Let me see if I can draw that a little bit better. You have this minor double top, and then you have a nice knockout move. So. People think, aha, that's the end of the trend. I'm going to pile on. I'm going to short. I'm going to bail out, whatever the case may be. And then if the market turns around and goes right back up, things work out pretty good. So there's your knockout move there. Oops, sorry. There's your knockout move. Now let's take a look at the CCJ. Notice that we had a fairly decent uptrend, and then it began to accelerate higher. If you have uh, my book, 10 Best, um, you know that I talked about accelerating momentum strategy. So that's part of what's going on here. And this is kind of a TKO-ish type of move or a TKO move here. Now, the only thing I didn't like about this, and I actually came out and said it to everyone, is that, hey, you know what? 
I don't like the fact that it's gapping against a trend. And I would say 99.9% of the time, if I see a gap against the trend, I won't take the setup. Now, there are a few caveats that I use, and that's because uh, there's certain situations. You know, nothing is hard and fast. There's not really that many hard and fast rules when it comes to trading. So if a stock is a commodity-related stock, then a lot of times I'll be a little bit more lenient because they could be a little bit more volatile and they're gapping. The efficiency of the underlying commodity uh, creates a choppy market and you can have some, some gaps. So I was okay with the gap in this particular situation. But you have to be willing to accept your decision. And as I often preach, trading all balls down to making decisions and more importantly, living with them. And the living with them part can be kind of tough, as I often make a joke at my, at my wife's expense. Marrying the most beautiful woman I ever met was a pretty darn easy decision. But living with her is not. Just in case you're watching, babe, I'm half kidding. So anyway, it had a gap, but I was willing to live with that decision. And then obviously the TKO type of move. And my thinking was, if we had a trigger up here somewhere, and I forget what the exact trigger was, we can look back at that portfolio, then the chances of this being a bona fide reversal are pretty darn good. And if it doesn't trigger, it keeps imploding, so what? No capital was put into harm's way. Now, let's take a look at SALT. So it was a little bit different setup, but kind of the same theme overall. You can see kind of a gradual trend if you want to look back to here and kind of the accelerated trend if you look to here. Or the other way of looking at it, uh, as would probably caught my eye, was the fact that it did break out after a nice little consolidation and then obviously pulled back. So salt looked pretty good based on this too. Okay, Mark says it also has a big red down day rather than the hammer after the gap. Well, I don't use candles, so I'm not going to worry about uh, the down day. I'm not. What 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 stock were you referring to, Mark? Would candlesticks moving averages and other technicals help avoid minimize this loss? There's no loss yet. We don't have a loss. Where's the loss? Okay. First of all, I don't use candlesticks, and the reason I don't use candlesticks is that, as I often preach, uh, and a, a good friend of mine's written quite a few books. Uh, Greg Morris went. Learn, he actually learned the language and went to Japan to study candles. I think um, Nissen might have be beat him to it. Uh, otherwise, uh, Greg would probably be more famous than Nissen for, for the candle books. I think Nissen got his book out first. Um, but he actually went over there and studied candles with, uh, with, a, with a trading master and very fascinating stories. Um, but even Greg will tell you, you got to be careful not to, not to make every bar something. It's not always a reversal. And my problem with the candle people is every pattern, every bar is something, like a big deal. Oh, it's a hammer. It's a doji. It's a baby carry. It's a baby with a poopy diaper. It's three birds crapping on a wire. And a lot of times it never materializes. And I don't want to pick on anybody, but if you look at some of these candle books, they'll show you these patterns, and they're right at this beautiful top. But then that pattern happened about 30 times within the chart, within the chart they're actually showing. And that's a well-chosen example. So you got to be careful with the candles. And then as Greg often points out, what are you reversing? If it's going sideways and you got a reversal pattern, then there's no trend that's being reversed. So that's my take on candles. Uh, I did use candles quite a bit early in my career, but I was fortunate enough to hook up with some old school traders that have been around for a long time. And they were using Western charts, so I just went back to the Western charts so we could get on the same pa uh, same uh, page, okay? But if it works for you, then then you should use it, okay? I'm, I'm not going to criticize anybody who's successful, okay? Unless you're unless you're doing something that has a bit of an anthill uh, characteristics. In other words, unless you could possibly uh, blow up in your trading, even though you were successful over the short to intermediate term, if you have a blow-up characteristic, then I might take issue to, with that, okay? But I would never criticize someone's trading, okay? Mark says, my point is his close was near the low, not the high. A pin of closing near the high would have been more likely to go up the next day. Well, Mark, we're not actually, actually, we're not, okay, Mark's saying that 
this thing close on its butt. Okay? And it did. But with a TKO, I would much rather have a TKO look like this and close down here because if it gets all the way back up here, if it comes all the way back up here, then you have a bona fide reversal and possibly a resumption of that longer term trend. Okay. Uh, his point is that, yeah, if your market closes up here, the chances of the follow through on the next day are pretty darn good. Okay. But you also have a chance, let's say that it was right here and you decide to get in right above that high and it closed, let's say it closed right here. I'm sorry, let's start over on that. Let's say it closed right here, okay, instead of down here, okay. So it closed up here and you were trying to get in right here. Well, the chances of that trigger on noise alone are pretty great. Now, I hear you, Mark. If it closes well, it's more likely to follow through the next day. But keep in mind that we're looking to stay with positions for hopefully years and years and years and make a whole lot of money capturing longer term trends. Now, you cannot predict that far out when it comes to markets. You can only predict maybe a few days at best, okay? And what we do is we say, okay, well, like getting back to that Captain Obvious trend, here we have a Captain Obvious trend. We're hoping, and there's that word hope again, but we're hoping that this Captain Obvious trend is going to keep on keeping on for a long time. Now, if it just keeps on for a week or two and we're able to get a partial profit out, that's fine, okay? But if it keeps on keeping on, we're going to trail a stop higher and hopefully stay with that position for a long, long time. So we don't want to focus too much on the micro, and that's one of the problems with the candle stuff is it does sometimes focus a lot on the micro. The problem with short, 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 term trading in and of itself is that you're never going to make enough longer term, okay? Now, you might look like a genius over a period of time, make a little, 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 make a little. and then unfortunately, whack, you get that, that aforementioned black swan move, which wipes out all your gains and then some, and sometimes it could even blow you up. So you always, and you might want to write this down, you always want to position yourself for limited losses and unlimited gains. And that is a secret to trading. I'm going to drop the mic. I'm, I'm out. I'm out. That's it. Dropping the mic. My work is done. Okay? Let me repeat that one more time. Minimize losses, maximize gains. And not just the opposite. If you want to have a very brief and brilliant career on Wall Street, then sell options, okay? And you're going to look like a genius for a while. You're going to be right maybe 90% of the time, okay, until, you do, until you're not, okay? So that'll work until it don't, as we say. The other thing you could do is you could, you could trade a mean reversion type of system where if a market's high, you sell it. If it's low, you buy it. And take small profits along the way, and that'll work until it don't. All right. I think I see a baby blue water unlit candle there. <laughs> uh, previous one with the TKO. Okay. Robert says, I realize that my platforms are for Forex and commodities, so not really optimal for stocks. Uh, no, no. Uh, trading is trading. Uh, you know, I've, I've got, I've, I'm uh, long and short. I have a, a half a dozen currencies right now that I'm long and short. Um, stocks are more inefficient as a general statement, okay? And... You're not going to capture a 100% move in a currency. doesn't mean they're not worth trading because they can occasionally make inefficient moves, okay? I would just much prefer finding a little shipper stock like this salt or a, a semiconductor like Chem or a little bank like the, was it NTB, that has the potential to possibly double or triple over the next, let's say, three years or three months, you know? as opposed to something that's that's being overanalyzed, overtraded, such as a currency, e-minis, et cetera, because the, they're efficient because there's too many people playing. 
it's a crowded playing field. You got hedgers, you got speculators, you got indexers, you got all these people fighting it out. And in currencies, uh, you would have major countries doing things, and it goes on and on. I've written extensively about that. So uh, start, go to the store on my website, and I make you, I make you go through the gift shop first. But scroll down through the store at the bottom is free reports, and I, I do, um, I did some some reports on um, efficiencies of markets. Okay. Uh, if you are going to do Forex, one thing I do like to do in Forex, it's something that I don't really uh, write about too much publicly, but one thing I do like to do, or, or any efficient market for that matter, is uh, wait until you have like a major, major high, okay, multi-year high or maybe even all-time high, but multi-year highs will work, and then look for something like an hourly bow tie on, on a one-hour chart, okay? That's a pretty good pattern to uh, to look for. In stocks, I just stick with the daily because I'm looking for a longer-term efficient move, okay? Okay, Robert says, uh, Dave, I realize that my platform are for Forex and commodities, so not optimal for stocks. If I drop you an email, would you be able to suggest platforms and our brokers for stocks? I guess NinjaTrader would work. I'm not sure, though. Yeah, Robert, with, with my um, way of trading, uh, as, far as, your, as far as your charts are concerned, uh, what I would recommend you do is I would recommend you use telechart because that's what I'm actually using. And you don't need, you don't necessarily need live quotes. Um, you could just uh, use, um, you could just use delayed for that. And then if you go to my website, I have to log out of something here to show you. But if you go to my website and you go down to, now the website might be changing soon, so uh, this might not be relevant a few years from now, but or a few months from now. But right now it says "Let's get started," and it, it'll be in a different format, so you might have to poke around. Is what I'm saying. There's a list of things here. You can click on this banner ad here, or you can scroll down. Uh, when we talk about charts. So uh, once again, I'm a distributor for uh, Telechart. I was, I was, I guess I always was an affiliate for them. But for a while, they, they uh, abandoned their affiliate program. That's a long story. But anyway, uh, before I digress too far, click on that right there, TC2000. Get the charts up and running. You just need the – you don't need real time. It's nice to have real time, but uh, delayed is, is really fine for my purpose. And then as far as the brokers, uh, I'm sure NinjaTrader would work. I'm not very familiar with their platform. You don't need direct access. You just need an automatic uh, execution or whatever. The, I forget what they call it, but the execution has a routing system that gives you best price. We're not trying to split hairs. In fact, in doing so, I think you could actually hurt yourself. I mean, we're trying to hold on to positions for weeks, months, and possibly even years. So uh, don't get too caught up in, in a high-end brokerage system. You really don't need it for, uh, for what we're doing because we're swing to intermediate, okay? Now, one thing that I thought about this morning is after I did this exercise, and I knew going in that I wouldn't because – I reached a point where, and, and don't get me wrong, I still drop F-bombs, I still get mad, I still get angry, I still get bummed out. But whenever I take a position, I have no regrets. I've reached a point where I have no regrets. I mean, yeah, I might still drop an F-bomb, but I don't try to turn back time and say, oh, I wish I would never have taken that position. And as I often preach, when you start doing these post-mortems, especially after the trade is done, you will occasionally find yourself thinking, what the hell was I thinking, okay? And I have found myself feeling that way many times in the past. But now I know not to put myself into that state of regret by making sure I'm willing to accept the decision that I'm making, okay? And if there is a problem with the trade, such as the aforementioned gap, I'm willing to acknowledge that and accept that. If I think the pullback could be a little deeper, but I think it's worth a shot, I'm willing to acknowledge and accept that. And, and, and part of my therapy, I think, from a selfish standpoint, is the trading service because when I make that video, I have to justify that position and I have to find out, I have to look at it and say, okay, what can I find that's wrong with this position? And point that out and then I have to reason why I'm going to take it anyway and in the case of the CCJ if you rewind the tape you'll see that I said hey guys I know 
this has a gap against a trend. I usually don't like gaps against the trend, against the trend, but for these reasons, I am going to take the setup. So I have no regrets, and and that's a big part about trading is not having any regrets. And then, as we'll see in just one second, the regret of missing out, the fear of missing out on something, can be worse. The regret of a missed opportunity can be a lot worse than the regret of a loss. So you really have to reach a point where you don't have any regrets before, during, or after a trade. Now, how do you do that? Well, you have to get your repetitions in when it comes to trading. You have to be willing to take a trade. And as I often say, it's a Steve Winward trade. When you see a chance, you take it, okay? The only problem in this business, the only problem, haha, but one of the problems in this business is, is you will feel this urge to make something happen. And that's because as a dog trainer, you have to go out and trade some dogs. As a doctor, you have to go out and practice medicine, okay? As a lawyer, you have to go out and defend bad guys, you know? And um, <laughs> a lawyer friend of mine actually said, uh, you know, we were, it's kind of a long story, but I actually said, yeah, let's hope we're, let's hope some good guys go over to uh, this lawyer guy. This, uh, this hope some good guys go over to Steve so he has some business. And he's like, oh, no, I don't make any money off of good guys. I make money off of bad guys. I'm like, okay, well, whatever. So if you're a lawyer, you have to defend good guys and bad guys, I suppose. But in trading, sometimes there's nothing to do, and you feel an urge to make something happen. So that's why you have to be really careful to recognize intuition versus intuition. And I borrowed that line from, from Market Wizards, and I forget who said it, but it's one of the better quotes in the book, or one of the quotes that stuck with me, certainly. There's a lot of good um, quotes in there. But I really like that. You know, you have to make sure you know the difference between intuition and intuition. Speaking of intuition, uh, Last week, I talked about the fact that I ordered Curtis Facebook trading from your gut. And um, I'm about halfway through with just, uh, you know, one sitting. I got about halfway through. So it's it's a it's a pretty quick read. Um, as we discussed last couple of weeks, you know, the fate of Mr. Fate is a little questionable. But you can't argue about what he did back in the day. And also, the way I look at a book is if I get one or two gems out of it, it's worthwhile. And from a psychological standpoint, there's a lot of good information here. A lot of stuff I already knew, uh, a lot of stuff I've already written about, but it's good to hear it again sometimes. And I just read a quote here. Let's see. Intuition will tell your thinking mind where to look next. Okay, that sounds good. Uh, as I often say, I find that the best setups tend to jump out at me when I'm going through my charts. So again, you have to recognize the between intuition and intuition. And you ask yourself, did you pick the best and leave the rest? And a little soft sell here. I have a stock selection course, which is 14 hours just on doing that. So check that out. The other thing you have to realize when it comes to no regrets is that outcomes are noisy. Okay? And Kirk Report had a really good quote on outcomes being noisy. And once again, I failed to uh, give credit where credit is due. I'm, I'm not sure who actually uh, was talking about the outcomes being noisy, but I could probably Google my website um, or whatever you call it, do a search on my website and find the articles that I wrote that reference that. But outcomes are noisy. The day-to-day -day outcomes can be very noisy when it comes to trading. And in fact, as I often say, a lot of times you end up in that state of regret more often than not. But you have to reach a point where you're not worrying so much about making money all the time. I would love if there was a uh, system out there where I could push a button and get a peanut, you know. But you have to worry about being right over time. So you want to focus on making money over time, knowing that there's going to be some losses in the meantime. And a lot of people, I often get emails from people saying, what can I expect? What can I expect? Well, I can't make any promises, and anybody who makes you promises uh, is unethical or stupid. Okay, they don't realize that they don't realize how it works. I, I've seen people before where I say, you know, I see you have a mechanical system there. You realize your biggest drawdown is ahead of you, and they'll get mad at me, like, 
like no it, this is the this it's gonna be so much correct it's gonna make so much portrayed and no it won't there's no guarantee in that if you take a look at uh it, it, businesses i'm getting tripped up here but you take a look at businesses where there is a statistical edge a true statistical edge okay like casinos in some cases that's only like a half a percent edge but it's a multi-trillion dollar industry because they know exactly what their edge is if you do exactly what your edge was then you could pile all your money and then borrow a bunch of money and then you know, beg, borrow, and steal as much money as you can find and then parlay that money because you knew what your exact edge would be. Well, the problem is you don't know what that exact edge is going to be. You know you have an edge, but you don't know what it's going to be. You don't know how it's going to play out. As we often say, as I often say, all predictions about the future, a lot of stuff could happen between now and then. So you just have to play along and then you have to, when conditions are really good, if you're doing everything on a conceptually correct basis, then you say thank you. You don't get careless. You continue to follow along. You trail your stops. You take your partial profits, and you just keep following the plan. And longer term, you'll be pleasantly surprised. But obviously, there's no guarantee. So the outcomes could be really noisy. Now, this is where people get a little tripped up. The definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different outcome. So you got to be careful in trading. You got to make sure you do have a viable system, something that will work over time, not all the time, but over time. And you don't want to just keep doing something that's going to get you into a drawdown that you never can recover from. So you have to reach the point where you're good enough in your stock picking and you're good enough with your methodology to you have the confidence to continue to follow it, good, bad, or indifferent. And that's that, that's that whole talk I was talking about being flippant last few weeks is that you have to be, you have to have kind of like a I don't care attitude about the outcomes. And I know, easier said than done, haha, -ha, right? Uh, but you have to just not care and be willing to put that capital in harm's way over and over provided you have picked the best and left the rest. Now, as I wrote in 17 Trading Resolutions for 2017, which is currently on my homepage, if you're watching this on a delayed basis, you should be able to find it uh, in the column archives, and that's one that I'll try to make sure stays um, current or easy to find. Uh, I wrote, remember, all trades will eventually end badly. You flat out lose, you make a little, then get stopped, or... Make a lot, but then give up a sizable portion of the profits in the end. So knowing this ahead of time is a bit of a, a release. Knowing that's going to end badly, it's like the pressure's off. So knowing ahead of time that there's going to be some pain in every trade makes it a lot easier when, not if, it occurs. Now, in looking for some quotes and some prior writings and to see what I've actually put out there. That's one thing that, I've, that I'm often finding is I'm, I'm like, what am I going to talk about? I need this content. Where am I going to find content? It's like I look at my own website. I, I'm not being egotistical. It's just, just a lot of stuff out there. i got like five or six other posts. So I started doing research on regrets and, and, and other uh, terms that I'm using in this presentation, and I found this going back to last summer. And it was on uh, August 30th, I received this email. And I actually wrote a column on this. So go back and check out that column when you get a chance. Hi, Dave. Sucks watching our position slowly drift lower except for pi. When all positions drift lower, it makes me want to take the position of pi off for fear will go lower. Am I the only one? So Lance's point was that the portfolio was beginning to erode and this uh, pie trade was beginning to erode in here too. It was the only one that was actually going higher. And of course, I preach stay in the course. And I thought it'd be fun this morning to go in and see what happened on those particular trades and how it ended up. So you can see you have not quite a double, but 
nearly a double in the trades. Now, not every one of them ended better. You could see uh, there were some open profits given up. But overall, things worked out okay. And you could see that this was the ultimate outcome. Now, I'm not trying to insinuate that every time you stick with the portfolio, it's going to have, uh, you're going to double what's in the portfolio. But my point is sticking with the portfolio longer term, provided, again, it's not garbage in, gar you know, garbage in, garbage out, the old programming terms, right? As long as you have good stuff going in, as long as you're confident in your positions going in, then tough it out, okay? And realize there's going to be losses and realize that the only way you're going to get paid is to be willing to take losses. Might want to write that down too. So I just kind of find it interesting that this turned out pretty good. So hopefully, the reason I'm showing you this, hey, Dave, that's in hindsight. Well, the reason I'm showing you that is so we can take that portfolio that I just showed and then hopefully six months or a year from now, we can come in and say, okay, it wasn't doing so hot at the time, but following along and continuing to plot along was a thing to do. Ed Thorpe just released a biography, just started, but it looks really good so far. A man for all markets, Ed Thorpe. All right, well, I have to, uh, I have to put that on my reading list. Okay, uh, a couple of announcements real quick before we hop into the charts. If you guys uh, want to start asking about uh, individual stocks, feel free to do so. I'm pretty excited to uh, be working on this and rolling out this learning management system. Uh, I'm working on a beginner's course right now, and the first, oh, probably four or five videos are going to be free on that. And uh, I'm very proud of it, and, and hopefully I'm not humbled when um, – <laughs> when you guys start looking at it and, and, and pick it apart. But I think, it, I think it's going to be pretty good, and that's going to be a part of the learning management system, which I'm very excited about. I think it's going to – there's tons and tons of content out there. In fact, and I know it sounds, it sounds egotistical, but I'm, like, amazed at how much content is actually out there. When I go to put together slides and do all this work, it's like I'll 30, 40 minutes into putting slides together, I'll start looking around my website, and it's like, well, you know what? I've already covered this many times. So – it's all there on the website. It's just buried. So I'm working to uh, shed some light on all that, make it a little bit more organized, make it a little bit easier for you to see what's going on. And then eventually, th especially through the learning management system, I'll be able to uh, not only help you to, to point you where you need to be, but I'll be able to see what you've done and see your progress. And a lot of times, and I know it's, it's, it happens in this day and age, we're all really busy. But a lot of times somebody will have a course and they'll be like, uh, they'll ask me a question. I'm like, you know, go back in and rewatch that part of the course. And I know to myself that they, I know they, they never did watch the course to begin with. But this new learning management system is going to make sure, not that I'm going to be big brother, but it's going to make sure that those things are done in an orderly manner and you'll get the, the whole point. Anyway, uh, working on a beginner's course, pretty excited about it. I filmed the second part of it yesterday, but there's still... 14 more pieces to film, but I think it's going to be pretty good if I say so myself. Uh, make sure you're at least on a delayed service. As I often say, uh, eventually there's, there is a, a limit as to how many people could be on it. The delayed service has been very popular. Delayed service, you're basically going to see what I'm doing uh, today with about a one-week delay on it. In some cases, it might only be a few days. In some cases, it might actually be a couple of weeks because it all depends on how the setups uh, shake out. Uh, current setups will not be shown until they actually, actually trigger. So if we have no setups going into tomorrow, everything triggered, then I'll probably end up showing that uh, portfolio and this in the actual service within a day or so. Um, so there is a limited number of people on here. As I often say, good traders make good decisions quickly. Good traders make quick decisions. If you've been following along for a year, you're still not sure, then it's probably not for you. Uh, if you do want to stay on the delayed service or you're just uh, a student or you just want to just continue to follow along and you can't afford the, uh, the trading service, that's fine. Uh, we all have to start somewhere. So shoot me an email, as a few of you guys have, and I'll, I'll make sure you don't, get, uh, you don't get kicked off after about a year or so. Got any questions? Shoot me an email. And then obviously we have lots and lots of free stuff on my website.
I came across this before we jump into the charts. I was doing, um, I'm a big fan of Captain Obvious. I just think it's the funniest thing ever, or one of the funniest things ever. And I came across this uh, Captain Obvious uh, thing, and I'm not sure. I guess the people over at funnyand.com, never heard of the website till today. Uh, but they said, when life shuts the door, open it again. It's a door. That's how they work. So I think that applies I think that applies to trading because you're going to have a lot of losses. It's one of the few things I can guarantee. I could probably make a lot more money in my educational business if I hyped it up a little bit and made it sound like you're just going to print money. But that's that's not the reality when it comes to trading, okay? You will have some losses. But longer term, you'll be pleasantly surprised. Again, worry about your returns over time, not all the time. How's that? All right. Uh, let's just see what's happening here, and then we'll pop out to the overall market. Somebody was asking about salt. Yeah, we'll hop into individual stocks in just one second. Salt is these are these are the actual stocks that we are currently long in the portfolio. There's the bank, and then there's Kemet. You can see. Up at new highs. And hopefully, I hate to use the word hope, but hopefully one of these will take off big time and it'll make the make the whole uh, portfolio worthwhile. All right, let's take a look at the overall market. And you guys want to start asking about individual stocks, feel free to do so now. And we'll get to those as soon as we're done with a, a brief look at the markets. The market's having a pretty good day today. Obviously, P's are up here at all-time highs, as I've been saying here, 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 and throughout this whole range. As long as the market is at or near new highs, give it the benefit of the doubt, okay? And that's another one of those, um, what's what's a good word when it, for it, uh, not a dilemma, uh, perverse things, however you want to look at it when it comes to trading, is that you will feel inclined to look smart and possibly pick a top, a reason why a market is topping. Margin call. And I would strongly urge you to, to not do that, okay? And just follow along. It takes a long time to give up your ego and just follow along. And, you know, what's the old saying when, when somebody um, when somebody criticizes you meanly or, what's, or insults you or whatever, you know, wear that shit like a badge. And that's how I became known as a trend-following moron. I mean, initially, I was pretty hurt, especially considering the source, you know, somebody who had utmost respect for. And then I got to think about it. It's like... Maybe I am a trend following moron, you know? <laughs> so you just have to embrace it and wear it like a badge and not try to outsmart the market, okay? As I often preach, there's always a reason to exit and rarely a reason to stay. But as long as the market is at or near new highs, you certainly want to stay the course. You certainly want to err on the side of longer-term trends. So, so far, so good in the S&P 500. Obviously, uptrend remains in place there. Take a look at NASDAQ, a little bit better. Even better, I should say. Remember last couple of weeks we talked about the fact that it broke out, came back in to kiss that little base goodbye, and then so far, so far so good, okay? Russell 2000. Well, this guy, we're trying to get this guy to bring up the rear. Today is not a bad day, though. Up a percent and a half. Still stuck in a range, but so far so good. Uh, one thing that we've noticed a little bit lately, and we've been talking about quite a bit, is that it has been uh, somewhat of a big cap rally, and maybe that's why the Russell's been lagging a little bit uh, in here. Let's take a look at some of these sectors. Let's take a look at the energies. Uh, the energies broke down below their base, but now they're trying to come back into the base. Uh, we, they could run into a little overhead supply when it hits the base. Uh, definitely wait for entries on any new setups here. As I often say, though, if a market breaks below a base and then takes out the top of the base, that's actually a bullish development. That will actually test out longer term. Let's take a look at the metals and mining. Metals and mining are kind of hanging in there. I especially like 
the uranium stocks. Obviously, we're long the CCJ right now. We're actually looking at some other ones. Uh, but so far, we're long CCJ. So far, not so good. Um, you can see Mark was talking about that follow-through. Uh, on a micro level, I uh, noticed that on the following day, this was a setup day, and the following day it did come back nicely. But like he was saying, when you have a, a strong close, you will get some initial follow-through, but often the market will come back in. But you have to be careful not to pick apart these little one-bar one bar patterns because it's very hard to make money trading that ultra short term. And then it looked like it was off to the races in here. Unfortunately, it began to implode again. So if we get stopped out, it happens, spell with a silent SH. Uh, gold and silver has been improving as of late today, notwithstanding, as I've been saying quite a bit. One of my problems here is that it's at mid-levels, okay? I like a trend that's up in clear air, and I like a trend that's coming off of major lows or major highs. Let me just show you that real quick, because I still get asked a lot of questions about this. So... I like a trend that looks like this to where there's nothing back here and this is like brand new highs, okay? So that's a good thing. Go in and look at that. In fact, let me just take a look. Let's take a look at SND, for instance, or KEM. SND. Oops, let's get the portfolio. So if you look at some of these guys in the portfolio, you're going to see that, like Kemet Frank example, okay? Uh, S and D might be a better example. See S and D all time highs, pull back, you know, clear air up here. That looks pretty good. Salt, same sort of deal. Well, that salt's not a good example. Uh, NTB is a good example. Okay, all time highs, you know, all time highs, pulling back a little bit. That looks pretty good. So, if I'm trading a trend trade, okay, an existing trend trade, I want to see all-time highs, and then like a pullback, okay? And there's nothing back here to worry about. If I'm trading an emerging trend, I want to see all-time highs and then that first little pullback. So this could be a bow tie, a first thrust, or something like this. So this wants to be all-time. I want that to be all-time highs, or I want it to be all-time lows, okay? I don't want to go after an emerging trend if it's, something like this in the middle of the if middle of the big longer term range okay so i'm getting a little tripped up in here but let me take a look back at gold and show you what i'm talking about so take a look at gold and you can see that if you back the chart way out it's kind of in the middle of this big longer term range and now it's turning back up. I would prefer if it was up here making some new highs at least uh, multi-year highs or on the flip side I like it I would like it if it was down here bottoming out for an emerging trend type of pattern okay so right now obviously we take a look at like the semis you're up here in clear air so this is kind of a more interesting pattern to me as opposed to some sort of reversal pattern within a range like you had back here, okay? So hopefully that makes sense. That's why I'm not as excited about the golds and silvers as some other areas. Tobacco's coming back with a vengeance. Tobacco's smoking. So I'm not sure if we'll go after anything there. we we'll just have to take it on a setup-by-setup -setup basis. Banks have lost a little steam as of late, but now you can see they're beginning to try to bang out some new highs again. Uh, as I say quite often and said quite often earlier, uh, give the market the benefit of a doubt of the doubt when it's near new highs. Uh, health services have been coming back nicely as of late. So far, so good there. Uh, some of these areas like retail have been lagging, especially like department stores. You can see eh, they're bouncing in here a little bit. Retail overall bouncing a little bit, but this is another example of that mid-level problem, okay? I'm not too excited about trying to trade a stock or a sector or whatever when it's in a, a big wide and loose range and somewhere in the middle of that range. I prefer to operate a little bit more on the fringes and that's for an emerging trend or an existing trend. Okay. Uh, transport's hanging in there pretty good. Uh, stalled out a little bit recently but you can see beginning to rally again came back and kissed the top of the little prior pullback. I'm sorry a little prior highs or whatever. 
But now they're beginning to uh, rally. It's so far, so good there. And mostly anything technology related. Hardware, if you could have hardware, you got to have software for your hardware. Uh, software making new highs, hardware making new highs, semiconductors, as I said quite a bit earlier, at new highs, internet, eh, not at new highs, but hanging in there. It was a new highs just yesterday, just off of new highs, a little wide and loose, but still hanging in there. So most sectors looking pretty good in here. Let's take a look at bonds. Uh, bonds are still trying to kind of bottom out in here. It doesn't mean I want to rush out and buy them, but... The reason I'm looking at them and saying, okay, well, it's good to the bottom out, bottoming out is it's not a route lower like we saw back in November. Okay, there was a big scare that we're going to have these interest rates go straight up, and then the market kind of came to its senses, and now they're just kind of bottoming out in here. Okay, uh, as long as bonds don't make a quantum leap, I think we'll be okay as far as interest rates. I think if interest rates just kind of slowly creep up. I think the markets can adjust and handle that. It's when you have these big quantum jumps in rates that scares everyone. It's the delta of rates, the change in rates that scares people, not so much the absolute rates. Because let's be frank here, people, the, what's, what's the interest rates? 0 0.000001, so take out one of those zeros and it's still 0 0.0001. You know, it's not that big of a deal. But when that delta changes greatly, is, is that being redundant? When the delta, the delta is what you have to worry about when it comes to some light bonds. But so far, so good. Uh, Robert, I need a symbol on that. PAYX, maybe? Okay, fantastic. Uh, let's go ahead and jump out to the individual stocks. Any questions on anything covered so far, feel free to let me know. Um, the first thing jumps out at me with CAT is that um, it's uh, it's pussyfooting around. How's that? It's going sideways in here since November. So you got uh, December, January, February. You got three months of sideways action. So as a trend follower, you want to connect the dots. And uh, that's one of the things I meant to cover today, just not enough time. But somebody wanted me to talk a little bit more about net-net change and the importance of that. And it's kind of a know it when you see it kind of thing because sometimes you might have a setup that's that's net net change isn't much over long term, but over the short term it it might be a developing trend that's a, that's beginning to occur. Okay, but in this particular case, you can see the net net change is is nil for about three months in here. So I there's nothing for me to do as a trend follower. Ninety nine percent of the patterns remember to look something like that. Okay. Yeah, P E A Y X. That's what I thought. Okay, Robert wants to talk about paychecks. Okay. Well, if anything, this looks like a short. Okay. You can see it sold off fairly hard, pulled back a little bit. Let's back the chart out a little bit and see what we're working with. Okay. Uh, I don't know if you're looking to get long this, but this actually looks like a pretty good looking short. Uh, the HV is a little low at 14, but for shorting, uh, that's okay. Um, I'd prefer if you didn't have all this trading down here, if it was just kind of you had this big range all up here. But uh, I, I personally would not take it. HV is a little low in this particular case. Not that I would ignore a short with low HV. Uh, the market is headed higher. Most sectors are headed higher. There's no need to rush out and short just yet. But if you did want to trade this, I think it would be more of a short than a long, and you could put a stop in at the old highs. And let's take a look at the bow ties. And lo and behold, you got a beautiful bow tie here coming off of all-time highs. Again, if you didn't have this uh, stuff in the middle right here, I, th I think it looked even better. But that's a pretty good-looking setup on a short side, not a long setup. And I don't know what you're looking to do, Robert, but uh, I would avoid that on a long side. And if you had to make a trade, uh, short it. Okay, GNTX. GNTX for HTML5 viewer user web, <laughs> whatever that means. Uh, that looks pretty good at first glance. Let's um, let's get rid of the moving averages. Uh, as we zoom in a little bit, the only concern that I have is you still have a bit of that net net problem that we just talked about. Okay, uh, notice that it hasn't made any forward progress since December. Okay. Now, yes, it's kind of, if you're just looking at this, it, it, it shot up in here and then it came back in, okay? 
but you still have a bit of a net net issue. Um, if you go here, I'm pretty sure I covered it in the um, in the intro course. Let me let that load, and then we'll we'll pop up we'll pop out to another one. Uh, but it also it also pulled back to its prior little breakout point too. So that's another important thing. And where I'm going with this, if um, if I if the site will ever come up. If you go to my website slash stock selection course or go to store and click on this page, buried in the middle of this page is a video. This is about an hour video or so. And I cover a lot of these uh, things such as net net, uh, pull back to the prior base and stuff like that. So if you don't get the entire course, at the least, please watch that because, again, there's a lot of good stuff in there. It's amazing how much stuff is in the basics, and then the rest is just details, and, and obviously there are quite a few details when it comes to all this stuff. Otherwise, it would have taken me 14 hours to cover it. But if, if you at least get the basics down, you're, you're 90 to 95% of the way there. Okay, CAD a good bet given Trump's plans for infrastructure. Okay, RG. Well, if you go back and watch the weekend charts that I did following the uh, Trump win, you'll notice that a reoccurring theme is be careful with big picture ideas. Be careful not to confuse the issue with facts. Okay, and if you go way back, you'll see that under President Obama, who was the biggest anti-gun president, arguably, in the history of the United States, gun stocks went up 900% under his tenure, okay? So you have to be careful with those. Um, and if memory serves, I think we made money on some coal stocks, at least on a trade under Obama, and Obama wasn't a big fan of coal, all right? So, yes, it makes sense to buy some... Uh, brick and mortar stocks, some material construction stocks, some caterpillar and things like that to build that wall. But you have to be careful with these big picture ideas. And instead, here I'm going to make your life a lot easier. Just draw your arrows and look at the charts, okay? So, banks look pretty good right now. Uh yeah, some of those material construction stocks look good. I think we went after one a while back. I'm trying to think of which one it was. But if it's trending and it's set up, it's the Steve Winwood trade. You see a chance, you take it. But be careful of these big picture ideas because you can get yourself in a lot of trouble really quick. And just try not to confuse the issue with facts is what I also uh, say. Oh, I just deleted one. It started with J. J in something? I'm sorry. Let's see if we can find it again. Yeah, I just deleted one. So if... Um, If you don't see by the end of the show, punch it back in. I'll I'll, I'll bring it up. Jan something. Yeah, this is a material. See, this looks okay, but notice that it did pull back to its prior little breakout point, but it's still in a longer-term uptrend. If you happen to be long this, then by all means, stay long. Uh, this is the point from Craig, XLB. Uh, it's not bad. You could certainly do worse. My only problem is that it did pull back to its prior little base in here. But yes, it's still in a trend. It's an ETF. If you're trading ETFs on a bit more of a relative strength basis, and I hate to use the word investing, but if you're investing in an ETF, then yeah, it looks okay, provided that you have some sort of stop in mind. My only problem here is that it's pulled back to its prior base in here. That's the only problem that I'm seeing with that, Craig. All right, TGPKO on 20th day, kind of drifting here, but possible. Yeah, I'm, I'm uh, as I said a few weeks ago, I'm still long this one. Um, and somebody asked me why I didn't show in the service. I did show in the service as a uh, Landry List stock, and I would never have brought it up because I don't want to pour, pour salt in anybody's wounds. But uh, somebody asked about it in the actual um, web show. So uh, full disclosure, I had to admit that I was long. Um, but yeah, it's beginning to pull back a little bit. A little bit more knockout move um, would would I prefer a little bit more knockout move? But certainly looks pretty good. Uh, sometimes I can't show these super duper speculative issues as official setups, just because. Uh, first of all, it's it's like what's a what's a Latin? I forget. Uh, plenum non cherry or whatever. Cherry, cherry, cherry. Uh, first, do no harm. I'm showing my ignorance here. I have to look it up. It's on my website somewhere. Um, 
And in a case like a super duper volatile issue like this, it's also a penny stock. I just can't recommend it as a direct recommendation, but I could put it as a Landry list for those more aggressive traders. So that's why that did, you didn't see that as an official setup. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's pulling back a little bit. I think a little bit more pull. I like to see a little more pullback based on the magnitude of the move. Okay. Uh, Brett and Jim both want to know about a certain stock, and that stock is a current setup in my trading service, so we can't talk about it. But Brett and Jim, good eyes on that. Angelo wants to know about CETX. CETX. Um, this was one I was watching for a while. It's a little wide and loose. I liked it back here, but it pulled back too many days. So, and now it's beginning to take off. Doesn't mean that just because something's no longer set up doesn't mean it can't work. But it's a little wide and loose. I think I would let this one break out to new highs and see how it acts before looking to um, to trade that one. Okay. Yeah, JNC. Sorry about that, Jerry. I got it now. Okay. J N J N C E. Uh, yeah, there's nothing to do here, though, because it's, um, let's see, one, two, three, four, five. Uh, it would actually have been a breakout buy on uh, yesterday's close based on the, uh, this is the buy at B pattern in the IPOs. Um, I'll probably need to put that course on sale again uh, because IPOs are doing fantastic now. Uh, I'd leave it alone today. Uh, if you're long, stay long, obviously. And if you're not long, let's see how it pulls back. It might be worth a shot. It is a little bit on the thin side, Jerry, so be careful if you do anything. Uh, GD I like, Andre, or I have liked it at least recently. Uh, you could see it, it took off, and then it had a pullback, and then, uh, but it's already triggered. So if you're long, stay long. But, yeah, this is a, this is an M&C stock, material construction. So, yeah. I, I, I or I. I? Uh, it's just too wide and loose. And then, see, look, it's it's in the middle of this range. This is what I was trying to talk about earlier, trying to explain. It's just a, a setup within a range, so it's hard for me to get too excited about that. Uh, it would actually have to break out to do highs for me to get excited about that one. SBLK is going to be a shipper. Yeah, Andre, we're already long bulk. I'm, I'm sorry, we're already long uh, salt. Uh, these shippers begin to take off. Now they're pulling back in. Uh, let's take a look at like a two-day chart on this one. Yeah, it's a little, I think I'd leave it alone for now, but I hear you. It looks like the mother of all bottoms. Uh, somebody said, Dave, you all often talk about how shippers don't trend and you don't like them. Why have you been talking about shipping stocks lately and recommending them? It's like, well, because they've been trending and because it's been, looks like it's been working and they've been taken off and I think it's worth a shot. Uh, keep this on your momentum list. I think in this particular case, you know, maybe if it knocks out a little bit more, we'll see. It needs a little bit more pullback. And if it goes on to make new highs, yeah, maybe on the next pullback. But, yeah, I am looking at the shippers. Uh, salt, let's take a look at salt. Salt, we are long. Uh, bah, bah, bah. Um, it actually needs a little bit pull back, more pullback in here. So, yeah, I'm not sure how this one would set up. I think I'd leave it alone for now, but as far as it being in a trend, I think it's I think it still looks fantastic. Um, but wait for it to break out, then look to play the next pullback on that one. Unless it makes kind of a double top knockout move, which I hate to use the word hope, but I hope it doesn't. R E B G for Mr. Howard. Uh quoting Latin. Prenum non tree. What is it? Now it's going to make me nuts. All right. Uh, yeah, this is a an IPO. Now it's too high price to play a breakout strategy, as we saw in the, um, as you know from the IPO course, which I think you have. P -R -I -R -I -R -I -R is it Prenum? Oh, it's going to make me nuts. First, do no harm. I promise I won't do this all day. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, on a pullback, maybe. Let's see what happens. But it's only three points. That's only a three-point move, which isn't that much for an IPO that came public around $25 a share. Uh, quoting Latin, ubi, ubi sub ubi, ubi sub ubi. 
Booby sub booby. Oh, are you trying to get me to say something bad? <laughs> uh, oob, ubi sabubi. Here we go. Primum non cherry. That's what I was looking for. Primum non cherry. And if P R I M U M non N O N N O C E R, I think the C is pronounced ch. Cherry. It's on my website. P M E. P M E. Oh, Semper Uber, Semper Uber, Uber. Uh This is kind of interesting. Uh, it's trending. Uh, it would actually have to accelerate a little bit higher in here, past its prior high, and then pull back. But, yeah, put that on your uh, watch list, by the way. All right, Golden Sachs, Goldman Sachs, GS. I just need to symbol Robert. It doesn't matter which, what exchange there are on. Uh, the problem with this from Robert is that it's uh, we have another one of those net-net uh, problems. So it's at 2.42, and we come back in time, and it was at 2.42 way back in December. Okay. Now, if you back the chart way out, you can say, yeah, but Dave, the net-net is uh, it's up, uh, you know, what is it up? It's up 66% since, uh, since June. Yeah, but in markets, it's, it's a bit of a Janet Jackson type of issue. It's like, what have you done for me lately? So if you're long, stay long. But for me to get excited, it, have to, it would have to break out to new highs and then look to make a pullback. Always wear underwear. Always wear underwear. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you guys are goofier than me today. And that's pretty bad. MPET. M-P-E-T. Um, this one is, this is one I've been following. It's very volatile, though. Uh, it's already triggered this pullback, so it would, act, it would actually have to make new highs and pull back. But it's so volatile, um, I'd, I'd be darn careful. That's that premium non cherry thing again. Uh, so it would have to make new highs and then pull back f to uh, set up again the way we uh, – looks a little bit lateral. Yeah, lateral is a good word for that too. Um, congestione, I think is what they say in Italy uh, when I show charts like that. Uh, IRTC, IRTC. Uh, yeah, Howard, this looks pretty good uh, for your watch list, but it's not set up, obviously. Nice little uh, breakout above the prior highs in here. It's one I've been watching. It's on my momentum list, absolutely, and it should stay on yours. Kim, yeah, we're long Kim right now. Let's take a look at Kim. Well, Kim is up here at new highs, so so far so good. On that one, maybe that'll be our big winner in the portfolio that we'll be talking about weeks or months from now. But, uh, yeah, so far so good. But I'd like to see it continue higher and then pull back before looking to uh, initiate a new position on that one. Maybe too thin rare X. That's good. Yeah, I might like that because that's going to be one of those rare earth stocks, I believe. No, that's a pharmaceutical. Uh, yeah, it's super thin, uh, at least based on today's trading. It is an IPO, but yeah, on a pullback, absolutely. It might be worth a shot. IRTC, that's going to be uh, that rhythm stock. Yeah, we talked about that one. Um, HRI. HRI. Yeah, that looks good. Uh, let's see. HV is pretty good. Thin. A little thin, little thin side, but longer term, not too bad. Um, 90 day. Why do I have 90 day in there? It shouldn't be something else. Uh, let's see. I'll have to fix that later. Um, yeah, this looks pretty good. I'd like a little bit more knockout move, a little bit more pullback, but it certainly looks pretty good. I mean, it's almost it's almost high five worthy. Uh, I really can't pick it apart too much other than I'd like a tiny bit more pullback, maybe to like 46 in here. Uh, but it looks good. I think you could certainly do a lot worse. A little thin today, though, for some reason. STHGV. Is that two stocks or one? HGV, um, yeah, it's breaking out to new highs. Uh, it's hard for me to get excited about, you know, an IPO, it's like, what's the story, fat or glory? Uh, so they're Hilton Grand Vacations. I'm just not sure how a casino could be that exciting. But as a trend follower, it's not for me to question too much. But what I would do in this particular case is 
when I have an IPO that, that I can't wrap my head around being some sort of um, exciting new technology or some sort of fad, it could be, it could be food, it could be anything. It doesn't have to be a, a gee whiz technology as we discussed in the course. But if it's something like Hilton Grand Vacations, then I would kind of prefer a secondary type of pattern. And by secondary, secondary, I mean let it establish itself in a trend and then look to play the pullback. So put it on your momentum list. It's on my momentum list. It should be on your momentum list, but wait for it to pull back before looking to take action on that one. AXS for HTML5 viewer. Okay. That's it odd name you have there but who am I to judge um, yeah I don't like the fact it just made this huge gap higher and came right back in so it's a little unorthodox and now it's just kind of drifting up uh, nothing wrong with keep it on your momentum list HV is a little bit low at 14 I would I would actually wait to see if it could make new highs and keep making new highs and then look to play pullbacks along the way GV, I think we covered. Yeah, EGI. Did we cover that one? EGI. Um, yeah, this is a this is a penny stock. Obviously, gold stock, high HV, penny stock. Let's back the chart out a little bit. See what we got. Uh, it's just kind of all over the place, and it's a penny stock. I hear you. It's taken off. It's pulled back. Uh, you know, buy it, but use a fifty-three cent stop. You know, how's that? Way too dangerous. Andre, that's our setup for today. Good eye, though. Good eye. Good job. Andre's pretty pretty good at figuring out what we're doing. Can't talk about it, though, if it's a setup for today. Uh, no, this is just kind of wide and loose and sideways in here, and it's not a tremendous amount of range for an IPO. So what, what, what we'll do now is, in this particular case, we just treat it like the core methodology as opposed to some of the bending of the rules that we do with the IPOs, okay? Like, for instance, trading some of these breakout patterns. I would not trade the breakout here, though. I would let it break out and then trade it more like the core methodology where you look to play that first pullback after a base breakout, okay? So hold off on that one for now. Yeah, we covered that, we covered that one, uh, AXS. I C H R. Yeah, you guys are all over these IPOs today. That's good because IPOs are doing great. It's time for me to point that out once again. In fact, I need to put a little banner ad on my website uh, because the IPOs are doing really well. Uh, yeah, it's just right at these brand new highs. But what you need to do now is see if it continues to break out and then do the pullback. Uh, you can see from shows past, we talked about the breakout pattern back here. And that's all in the course, this uh, this little pattern here. Great little pattern. One IPO pays for them all. Absolutely. Kind of like the Whipsaw song, huh? Yeah, this has got too many days of the pullback. Uh, this is one that we are long, uh, but just too many days of the pullback. But it does look, it does, still looks good longer term. Maybe take a look at like a three-day chart, a two-day chart, a four-day chart. So far, so good in this one. But on a daily chart, you can see that it's uh, just too many days of the pullback for now. I mean, it looks okay. It's not bad, okay? But it's it's getting there. It's getting to be too many days. So if it doesn't trigger soon, I would leave that one alone for a new setup. But Dave, you're long. Would you why would you would you get out? No, no, no. You you follow the plan. That's what you do. Is there a difference between your momentum list and your watch list? Absolutely. My momentum list is a list of stocks that are trending, okay? My Landry list is a list of stocks that are set up. So we could maybe look at an old Landry list in here. Let me just grab one from, let's say, February, beginning of February. So February 1st, let's go back and take a look at this. So these were the stocks that were in the Landry list. This was a short. Uh, this was a long. You could see uh, you could see these stocks have pulled back and were set up. Actually, it would be the day before. It would be that day. So you can see they're in my Landry list because they took off and pulled back. So these are the stocks from back then. This was a short. That MPET, y'all were talking about a minute ago, there it is, MTW. You can see it's pulling back in here. Now, in some cases, this particular case, I'd like it to pull back a little bit more, but it was close enough to a setup that would worth care, it was worth careful watching. Salt was probably, that's probably the day we actually put the salt on the, uh, on the service. SND is one more long. You see what's pulling back then. 
TK, shipping company, pulling back. URG was pulling back. That's a, a uranium stock. U, 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 U was uranium stock pulling back. So these are stocks that are pull, that are pulled back and set up. For instance, UVV, kind of a trend knockout type of move on that day. Let's see what happened. I think that one took off. That's pretty cool. Um, let's see what the rest of them did. That was a short, never triggered. Uh, up a little bit, never really triggered. Let's see what's going on here. Uh, this is a short. This one took off a little bit. So not a whole lot of action in here uh, just yet from that list. But that's my actual list. My momentum list, which I just cleaned out. There's not much to look at in it now. But my momentum list is just stocks that would be that are trending that I would just keep an eye on. Okay. And every day, for instance, all these Landry lists eventually find their way uh, into my uh, momentum list. So everything in the Landry list becomes on a momentum list. So if you went through all these, if you went through the delayed service archives and then just copied all these stocks in here for the last month or two, that would also be your momentum list too. BL for Howard. Yeah, we talked about that one, Howard. Um, the recording will be posted, so you can take a look at that if you missed it. You probably uh, asked about it and then went took a leak. Uh, yeah, two sideways, okay? But I hear you. Uh, it's certainly trending. Uh, it's a little too sideways. So for me to get excited, I had to break out to new highs and then pull back, okay? See you next. Did we talk about that one? I think we did. Yeah, I mean, in a case like this, it would have to keep breaking out and then pull back, okay, because it's just going a little sideways in here. But, see, this would be a stock that needs to go on your momentum list, okay? And then every day you go through the momentum list, and then you put your, you make your watch list here. You also go through another 2,000 stocks just in case. ITI got your pullback. ITI. Yeah, it needs a little bit deeper pullback, though. Um, one thing that kind of jumps out at me, and it's okay, but you can see that it kind of took off, and then it kind of lost a little steam in here. But it looks okay, but it needs a little bit deeper pullback. It's also super-duper thin. It's too thin, so I would toss it out just because it's too thin. Uh, IPOs, I'm a little bit more lenient when it comes to getting thin. Not enough time to get into that, but there you have to actually look at it on a day-by-day -day basis and figure out whether it's thick enough to trade. Uh, yeah, we talked about this is one, again, that needs to go on your momentum lists, okay, because it's not set up, all right? But it could set up soon. So good eye on that one, Howard. And then I think we covered the rest of these. Let's just see. All right. Yeah, we covered that one, and then we covered that one. All right, any more? Anything else uh, while you got me? we got a couple of more minutes here. We've got for, time for a few more. PBT? And MMMM. Robert, looks like you're looking at a lot of uh, big, thicker stocks. Um, do me a favor. Read that article. Or do yourself a favor. How's that? Uh, read that article on uh, efficiency on my website and uh, again you can get it from free reports and on something like these big cap stocks I'd actually prefer shorting them so if you go to store my website and you go down here to free reports and you can see a list of these free reports uh, I'd actually prefer see this go go no mo I'd actually prefer shorting these more efficient uh, big cap stocks than going long and then also, so download that report and then also read, uh, blah, blah, blah. Let's see if I can find it. Why you should trade inefficient markets. That's the, that's the other important one, okay? So you just go to store and then scroll down to free reports. You have to walk through the gift shop, okay? But see, this is just kind of wide and loose and all over the place. And it's also really, really thick. So... There's no discernible trending pattern here. I mean, if you look at some of the ones we've been talking about earlier in the show, uh, let me see if we can find the one. So this is what we want to look for in a stock, obviously. 
we want to be able to draw that line and we want to have Captain, we don't, almost want to imagine that uh, Captain Obvious is going to pop up, okay? So you see that a case like this, you could draw a big arrow and then it's an uptrend and that's it should be a Captain Obvious type of moment. If you're trading an existing trend, if you're trading an emerging trend, a little bit more difficult, a little bit more tougher to recognize, but if you're trading an existing trend, it should be a little more obvious. It shouldn't look like electric cardiogram. So you can see that 3M is it's up, it's down, it's up, it's down. It's kind of all over the place. Okay. Yep, I do not fancy blue chip big names. It's just that they are said to be quite promising this year. Yeah, and that's the problem that you got to be careful with. Okay, it's like yeah, it's like that. That's the play of the year. Well, sometimes when it's obvious, it's it's too obvious. Okay, if it's obvious to everyone then it might not work. And, and I hear what you're saying, you, but you're kind of looking at it like an investment. And there are no good investments. And, um, you know, I've written columns on this before, and I've actually just read it today. And it's like I read stuff in books and think, hey, are they copying me? But I read today in a book, um, Tools of the Titans, it said uh, every asset class has lost, like every asset class will lose 50% of its value in your lifetime. And I've said that quite often. Stock market has lost 50% of its value twice in my lifetime so far, uh, maybe even more. NASDAQ's lost 70-something percent at one point. So be careful with these quote-unquote investments and big-picture ideas. And if you go back, uh, go back starting in November, I talked a lot about these type of plays and the danger of, of, of those type of things. So be careful with that, uh, Robert. That's the only thing. All right, HTML5 viewer user parentheses web says, do you, Dave, do you use Fibonacci for pullback and projection for profit? I've talked about that in the prior session. Thanks, Frank. Uh, Frank, as a general statement, I'm not a big fan of Fibonacci patterns, okay? Um, they do occur, and there are some tradable Fibonacci patterns. But as a general statement, if you had to say yes or no, I would say no. But I do have a pattern I call the gatekeeper, which is Fibonacci related. And I don't actually measure it. I just eyeball it. And the gatekeeper, let me just show you that real quick. The gatekeeper, and I, I like it more on the short side than the long side. But the gatekeeper, we're looking for a major new high. And then you're looking for a sharp retrace back to that new high. So that's a gatekeeper. And I don't actually measure it. But if you did measure it, it would probably end up at 618 to 786, okay, somewhere in here, okay, because it stalls short of that prior high. For me to use Fibonacci, it has to be conceptually correct, okay? If you just told me there's these numbers and the market sometimes reverses around these numbers, then I'm going to have to throw it out because if you can't explain to me why it works, I won't use it. But in this case, with the gatekeeper, I get it, okay? It's something I've observed empirically, I guess that's redundant, but it's something I've seen empirically over and over. Market stall short of the prior highs and then roll over, and it just happens to be at a Fibonacci number, okay? So I can wrap my head around that, and I can see the psychology behind this pattern. Just like in the IPOs, you can trade these deep retracements, and I'm okay with a Fibonacci deep retracement in IPOs. So if you add all this up, it's probably 1%, not even 1% of what I do, okay? So I don't use them that much. I think there's a little mystique to them. Uh, I think you have to, you can't just say a market reverses direction because it's at a Fibonacci number. You have to explain to me why it does that. And nobody can nobody can actually do that. But if you have a pattern that makes sense, like these IPOs to get a little bit ahead of themselves and then have a deep retracement, I can wrap my head around that. Okay, And I actually put that, I think, in the first book. I kind of snuck that in there if you look. Um, Early in the first book, I talked about the a deep retracement in, um, in IPO patterns. And the beauty of the IPOs is that you know the beginning and you know the high, okay? My problem with the FIB people, and I don't want to get into a lot of trouble, and I don't want to piss anybody off because i got friends that trade Fibonacci, but what happens is usually, you know, they'll have a chart, and then it'll look like, it'll look like this, okay? And each one of these is going to be a Fibonacci level and a Fibonacci zone and a Fibonacci retracement. And it's like, if it doesn't stop here, it ought to go to here, go to here. Oh, look, it stopped right at the Fibonacci, and then it went right up to the Fibonacci. It's like, well, shit, you draw enough lines on a chart, it's always going to be at a, at a Fibonacci line, right? So that's my problem with it. But if you're trading something like an IPO, 
and you know the low because you know the low and you know the high because you know the high and then you got a retracement off of that and as I said a second ago sometimes they get a little ahead of themselves yeah by all means that makes sense to me this does not make sense to me but if you're if you're doing this and you're making money doing it then don't let me f you up okay keep doing that that's a long winded answer <laughs> sorry about that all right, how or slob? All right, let's take a look at those two real quick. I'm sorry, that rant put us out of time. <laughs> Shit, SLB. SLB. Uh, no on the slob. I mean, if anything, slob looks like a short, but you're not coming off of high levels like this. You're coming off of mid levels like we've been talking about throughout. So if you had, if you, if, if, I hate to say, it, put a gun to my head. My wife hates when I say that, but put a gun to my head. I would short this stock, but I would I would leave it alone. But if you had to do something, you can see it's beginning to fail, pull back a little bit, but also kind of widen loose too. And SLB, how about none of the above? Maybe how? Uh, uh, yeah, how how would be preferred over SLB because at least it's kind of trending in here. But with the how, you can see that it's kind of going mostly sideways as of late. So I would stay away from both of those guys for now. Okay. If it actually did work on Forex, I would be broke. Uh, yeah, but can you wrap your head around why it works? Uh, it, it, you know, for me to, to, you know, if it works, if, if I can wrap around how it works, that's great. It, it, yeah, if it's working for you, then by all means use it. I'm just criticizing those who plot a thousand lines on a chart. You know, if you're plotting a few lines and trading around them and using trend, then by all means, I, I, I get it, okay? Um, and as I often say, everything works better with trend. I mean, there's some some arcane methods that I do not believe in. I don't want to get I don't want to get into a big argument about it. And every now and then people will print money with them. Well, the reason they print money is because it's a trend. Uh, yeah, shop looks good on a pullback. Put it on your momentum list, absolutely. I don't know who asked that. Uh, Jim did. Uh, STM for Andre. Uh, kind of, eh, it's a foreign stock. Okay. Yeah, maybe on a, a knockout type of move. It's certainly been in a trend, that's for sure. Honestly, I think it's been said so many people that so many people are hurting into these levels. Good point, Robert. I, now, see, that's something I can wrap my head around. Okay. I, that's something I can wrap my head around. Of course. Yeah, that's. Good. Yeah, I like that. You know, you just, you made me think. So thank you for that. I like that. So Robert's point is that he's trading Forex and he's using Fibonacci. And the reason it's working is because people are hurting around those levels. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I'll buy that. So for once, I finally have a reason to talk about, uh, to say that maybe Fibonacci has some merit to it. Maybe, maybe you do the opposite, huh? Uh, the only thing I don't like about this one is you just got that one big gap up day. So I, I think I'd leave it alone. It looks like it trades in chunks. looks like every time it has earnings, it, 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 uh, it makes a big pop or sells off. So I'd leave that one alone. FLGT. We're going to have to go ahead and wrap it up. We're running out of time. Uh, yeah, this one looks a little super thin. It's got a little volume to it. I'd leave it alone. Too many days of the pullback. Let it break out. Let it see if it get. Wait to see if it gets some more volume, and then looks to play uh, pullbacks along the way. Uh, look, uh, we're out of time. I, they, the recording gets a little hard to manage after about an hour and a half, so I need to shut things down. I appreciate uh, you guys and girls coming today. I'm humbled that you were here. Uh, any follow-up questions? Feel free to shoot me an email at daviddavelander.com. Uh, if it's an answer that requires a lot of thought, it will become fodder for next week's show. Speaking of next week's show, hope to see all you guys and girls again here next week. Thank you so much again. And if we don't talk to you now and then, everybody have a fantastic weekend. Thank you so much.